In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my at-home tanning routine and how I achieve super glowy bronze skin at home without laying in the sun because we do not want any premature wrinkles. This is my ultimate updated self tan routine. I did a tanning video last year that blew up and a few things have changed since then. So I want to fill you guys in on that. My tanning expertise has grown. I've been tanning for over 12 years now. So I'm going to give you all the secrets, all the tips that you need to achieve a perfect tan at home. You can use a tanning mousse, a tanning lotion. It does not matter. This video will teach you all of the best practices for using all of these different tanning products and how to get the best tan of your life all year round. First things first, prep is absolutely everything that has not changed since last year's video. Just like with your makeup, you first prep your skin with all of your skincare products. Same thing with your nails. You have to prep your nails before you paint them. The prep will determine how well your products perform. And I know you want your products to last as long as possible because tanning is a mission. It takes so much work. So I would rather just do it right the first time and then have it last a solid two weeks to make it worthwhile. Learning how to maintain your tan is also a key part of this so we will touch on that in just a second first is our in shower prep see the first thing that you need to do is cleanse your skin you need to make sure your canvas aka your skin is clean and prepped and ready to go so first start off with using a body wash a shower gel whatever you normally use to cleanse your skin then you need to exfoliate I like to use either an exfoliating glove or like a sugar or salt scrub you need to scrub off off the top layer of your skin not harshly do this gently but we do want to make sure all of that dead skin that's just sitting on top of our skin as gross as that sounds is taken off before we apply our tan so that it can last as long as possible shaving technically is a form of exfoliation but make sure you exfoliate your body not just from shaving if you're gonna do that anyway you don't have to any kind of body scrub that you have should do the trick next in our in shower prep is going to be oil this might be the most controversial thing that I talk about in my tanning videos that I get so many comments about in every single one of my tanning videos is why are we moisturizing before we apply our tan because everywhere it says not to do that but honey let me tell you for the last three to four years I have been applying lotion to my skin in this case oil you can use oil or lotion to moisturize your skin before you tan it does not prevent the tan from sticking to your skin Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that if it didn't work. Like I said, I've been doing this for three to four years now and every single time I moisturize my skin really well. My tan goes on so much smoother. It literally smooths on my skin like butter. It's so much easier to apply and blend and it also fades so much more naturally so that I don't get patchy. So this oil in the shower is basically the first step to that. So I, of course, use my new root oil. These are currently not being sold anymore. We sold out last year and I haven't restocked them. Kind of like a limited edition thing. If you guys really want me to bring it back, then potentially do that in the future. I still have a couple bottles. So I've been using my new Rue body oil. This is the Jasmine. It smells so good. It's literally just like Jasmine essential oil, grapeseed oil, sweet almond oil, vitamin E, and it's really good for your skin. Grapeseed oil is super good at reducing redness in your skin, which I tend to get a lot of. And sweet almond oil is really good for hydrating sensitive skin. It's like one of the best sensitive skin friendly oils so that's what I use I apply it in the shower we are going to shave with that oil acting kind of as the shaving cream shaving as I said before is a form of exfoliation so technically you're exfoliating twice if you choose not to shave that's totally fine just make sure that you do exfoliate before with like the exfoliating grub <laughs> I keep saying grub <laughs> exfoliating glove or some type of scrub clean exfoliate oil then shave you got it you got it okay moving on my handwriting is that of like a third grade boy so <laughs> Don't judge. Your after shower prep. So once you do your oil and you shave, you're going to get out of the shower and you're going to pat dry. This is where I like to go in with any type of lotion. This is actually just the hand lotion from The Way. It's kind of dirty actually. It's been sitting in my bathroom, so it's just a little dusty. And I will just go in and apply lotion to my wrists, my elbows, my shoulders, my ankles, my knees, anywhere that is kind of already a little more dry than the rest of my body. Also, if you choose not to shave, still make sure that you do apply some type of 
body oil when you're in the shower after you exfoliate because that is going to give your entire body a thin layer of moisture which is like I said gonna help your tan glide onto your body and look really natural the lotion is really just to prevent any tan from sticking into like lines on your skin fine lines any dry spots make sure to extra apply lotion just to make sure the tan doesn't gather there and look kind of dark and patchy now you're just gonna wait for about five to ten minutes let that moisture soak in to your whole body then we're gonna start applying our tan I usually like to go for this golden baby right here this is the aerated self tanning foam in ultra dark from Bondi Sands this is what I use like every single time I tan basically when I'm ready to do like a full deep dark self tan at home when you are using any type of foam or mousse you need to use one of two things you need either a mitt like this to protect the tan from getting on your hands or you need <laughs> straggly thing over here some type of latex glove I just got this big pack off Amazon it was like really affordable I'll link it below I have used a mitt ever since I've been tanning for like the past 12 years and the past couple months I've started to use this glove and I'm actually kind of starting to like it it's definitely weird I was very used to a mitt so the first time I tried a glove I didn't like it but it definitely does not soak up as much product as the mitt does and then it's just more pigmented which is great so I've been using a glove recently I will link the ones that I got off of Amazon down below you definitely need a glove or a mitt if you're using a foam or a mousse they're just really high quality products they are very pigmented and they can stick to like the calluses on your hands and in your fingers there's just no way you're getting that off once it's soaked into your skin so definitely use a mitt or glove if you're using a tanning lotion you can apply it with a mitt or a glove or you can just apply it with your bare hands that's usually what I do this is probably one of my favorite tanning lotions the ingredients are so natural like when I don't feel like putting a bunch of chemicals on my skin it's like that is that sound with all these tanning products this is the one that I go for because it's so natural it has witch hazel it has cranberry coconut oil green tea extract argan oil vanilla aloe vera is the second ingredient which is like my favorite thing about this product so definitely an amazing tanning product if you're looking for something super natural and it gives you such a deep dark tan it's my favorite tanning lotion ever just to let you know as soon as you're done applying the tanning lotion it's applied the same as a foam but as soon as you're done applying it to your whole body you need to go wash your hands my mom didn't do this and that's my mom like I make videos about tanning I really I really should have helped her out more but she did not wash her hands after she applied a tanning lotion and she was scrubbing for like days and she said nothing was getting it off so make sure you wash your hands if you're a beginner to tanning make sure you start with a tanning lotion and not a foam or a mousse those are something you need to work your way up to once you get more comfortable with the tanning lotions quick bubbly water break drink your water sparkling or non-sparkling this is the peach waterloo sparkling water it's not like my fave fave but it's definitely not bad here's the lowdown on how you're going to apply your tan to your body whether it's a tanning lotion or a mousse start at the bottom but start at your shins don't go straight into your feet start applying the product to your shins then use the excess product on your knees and to rub a little bit down your ankles into your feet we'll get into exactly how to tan your feet later so don't worry about like putting a lot of product on your feet or your ankles it's just like weird down there like there's like lots of lines and cracks and you don't want your tan to soak into that to start working your way up to do your hands and your feet you're gonna need a dedicated makeup brush and I like to apply a little bit of product straight to the brush this one's kind of discolored because I've used it for tanning a lot apply product to the base of your hand or the base of your feet and then take the excess and run that over your fingers in between your fingers over your toes in between your toes it's basically the same process I did a whole YouTube shorts on this too so if you want to check that out I'll link that below and it kind of goes a little bit more in depth but definitely use a makeup brush to apply product to your hands and your feet it works so much better I used to have like a little baby mitt that I would try and do it with and I just realized that a makeup brush was so much easier you just have a lot more control moving on so how I tan my feet face I like to use the Bondi Sands self tanning sleep mask this is basically a tinted lotion that you can use all over your face before you go to bed and you wake up and your skin is glowy and tan this 
to me, has a slight orangey tint to it. It's bronzy, it's beautiful, but it's slightly orangey. So keep that in mind. And I still like to use it, but I like to pair it with the foam. And I take my makeup brush that we use to apply the tan to our hands and feet. And I basically use the lotion all over my face. And then I use these two to contour my face with self tan. And this deepens it up, darkens it up. This is super olivey. This is not orangey at all. It has more of like a green tint when you put it on. So your skin might look slightly greenish, but that's totally normal. And when you sleep all throughout the night on your tan and then wash it off in the morning, it's not going to look green at all. It looks beautiful and olivey and glowy. So just putting that out there, if you do use this product, yes, it might look a little green on your skin, but it looks beautiful the next day when you wash it off. So do not worry. You can actually kind of see on this brush. It's like slightly green tinted. <laughs> That's from this tan. That's how I tan my face. Sometimes I'll just do the lotion if I'm lazy, just being honest. And sometimes I've just done the foam and it looks really good as well. All right, for the gold that I did not include in my last tanning video, and I literally got thousands, thousands of comments asking this question. How do you tan your back? all by yourself. Well, you're in luck because this time around, I have that answer for you. And now you can tan your back all by yourself. No more pale backs, everyone. I'm just gonna be honest, I don't tan my back every single time, especially when it's winter and like I'm not gonna be showing my back. But for when you do need to tan yourself, you can get your back with this baby right here. And it's basically the action of a towel. That's how you tan your back with this thing. What I do is I take my tanning foam I don't think I've ever used a lotion with this. So maybe I'll have to try the lotion with this. For the tanning foam, I just spray a little bit in the middle of this thing. Kind of like pat it in there so that when I go to like put it behind my back, it doesn't like fall off because this foam is a big glob. So I kind of rub it in there and just like a little patch. Then I just go ahead and very carefully, the middle of this has tan on it. Go behind my back. I'll just pat it on my back like this. It looks kind of funny. And then I will just start going at it like it's a towel and rubbing it all over my back. What I really like to do is bend over a little bit, like kind of hunch my back so that the middle of my back gets tan. Make your back as flat as possible and then just go ham with your little towel mitt. This is so nice. This is so soft. This was like one of the most affordable ones on Amazon. There's like a couple handheld ones that you can use and I tried those and they just like did not work as well as this. So this is what I recommend and I will have this linked down below as with all of the products that I'm talking about if you are interested. Let's see what's next. Um, we're on to page two, people. Now that your tan is all set, it's applied, now your job for the next eight to 10 hours is to not screw it up. I like to tan at nighttime because then the chances of screwing it up are much less. I like to tan right before I go to bed. I have a all black satin PJ set. It's long sleeve, long pants. It's really thin, so I still wear it in the summertime. Obviously, I just have my AC on because it's still kind of hot. You need to wear something that will cover your tan up to protect it and to also protect our sheets. I got a white bed back there with white sheets as well. And so we do not want to get tan on that. I use it every single time that I tan. I love it. It's like my little treat to myself, my little matching set that I get to wear every single time I go through all this effort to tan my whole body. I really struggle with getting water stains on my tan. I'm the type of person, if I tan in the morning, I would go ahead and do my dishes and then that will get water stains all over your wrists. If you wash your hands, if you wash your face, if you just splash water on yourself, that will give you little dots all over your body and ruin your tan. So definitely recommend, highly, highly recommend tanning at night. That's the only time that I tan. Don't wear jewelry and don't wear tight clothes, like tight socks or anything for the next eight to 10 hours. If you do wanna wear socks to bed, which sometimes in the winter I do, I just wear like really loose, like fuzzy socks or something. And that seems to be fine. That doesn't affect my tan. You will want to leave this on for about eight to 10 hours and then wake up the next next morning and immediately get into the shower. When you are showering and washing off your tan, you're not going to want to exfoliate probably for like the next 24 hours is what I would recommend. So don't use your exfoliating glove if you can help it. Don't use any type of scrub. That could take off your tan prematurely and it's just more susceptible like right after you've applied the tan. So let it definitely sit. You can still take a shower obviously. Rinse off. I like to apply more oil. Oh my gosh, every single 
single shower. I like to apply oil. Apply some type of oil whenever you're in the shower, especially the shower when you're washing off your tan. It will make your skin look so glowy and moisturized and beautiful. It's just unmatched. Like the JLo red carpet glow body oil is what does that to your skin, especially when you apply it in the shower. It's really nice because then once you get out and you pat dry, you don't feel oily because it's just like a really nice thin layer of moisture on your skin. Now your tan is good to go. You can wear jewelry, you can wear tighter clothes, you can go in the pool, the hot tub, the ocean. I haven't found any issues with this. Sorry, I feel like my angle got messed up. Okay, maybe that's better. But when I apply this foam or this lotion, any of the products that I've tried, they have not sloughed off, gotten patchy. When I go in a hot tub, a pool, or the ocean, my tan stays on really, really well. Maybe it's the prep. Now we are on to maintenance and upkeep, probably the second most important part other than your prep, because this is what's going to help your tan last for a full two weeks. It's going to make it last. It's going to keep it glowy and hydrated. You need to make sure you're keeping your tan hydrated. So the best way that I like to do that is, dang, my camera overheated again. If anyone knows how to prevent a camera from overheating, let me know if anyone's camera savvy. Anyway, back to our maintenance. I like to use a tanning lotion. This is the Everyday Gradual Tanning Milk from Bondi Sands. They did actually send me this one and I never, hold on, I want it to look fuller than it actually is, hold on. There we go. <laughs> now she looks full and complete, mm, Never mind. You can see, I've used a lot of this, but they sent me a couple products. This was one of them and I have loved this. When I first started using it, I was like, okay, it's a tanning lotion basically. And it wasn't super dark and I was a little confused. And then I realized it's a gradual tanning milk. And this is specifically for maintenance, which I absolutely love because I don't always want to go in with a full tanning lotion that's super pigmented. Sometimes I just put some of this on my arms before I'm going out or at nighttime or just on my legs or I do my full body with this. That's really what you should be doing at least like once to twice one to two times a week when you have tan all over your body to keep it nice and moisturized and to give it just a little extra oomph of color to make sure it stays and you keep looking glowy and fresh. I also have my OG Jergens Natural Glow. This is what I used in high school, you guys. I still use this sometimes. It's a little more orangey, I'm just gonna be honest. It's like definitely a little more orangey toned. It's not as high quality as some of the other tanners that I've mentioned, but it's super affordable. You can get it at Target, I think you can get it at Walmart, get it off Amazon. It's a good product, especially if you're first starting. Maybe start with this, it's an affordable price point. And it's good to like get your toes wet with tanning or to maintain. As I said, this should last you about two weeks with proper care and proper maintenance. The more that you sweat, the more likely your tan is to fade a little bit faster. If it's just like summertime and you're just like sweating more, that will definitely affect it. Just keep that in mind. Tan remover. So I know that there's some different tan removers out there. I've never tried one personally. To me, it just sounds like putting more chemicals on my skin, which I would rather not do. If if I don't have to and I find that when I use the body oil it helps it fade so much more naturally to the point where I basically never have to remove my tan if I'm looking for a consistent tan I just do this like every two weeks and then I just maintain I'm just gonna be real I do not do this every two weeks kind of go in like waves of being tan and then pale because it's a lot of work. I'm just gonna be honest. It's a lot of work. I will have all the links in the description down below. Please go ahead and comment your biggest tanning struggle or any questions that you have about tanning. As always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I will talk to you in that comment section down below. Bye guys.